What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. For today's video we'll be taking a look at what has become my favorite portable device for Mesh-tastic and that's this LilyGo T-Echo we have here. We'll go over my initial impressions of it, the specs, the general usage of the device with Mesh-tastic, and some pros and cons. So join me as we take a look at the T-Echo. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Today's video is sponsored by Rockland Technologies. With a great selection of mesh-tastic capable devices and antennas, they've been my go-to store for these and I highly recommend them. So here we have the T-Echo from LilyGo and this was provided to me by Rockland at a discount for this review. And I've found myself carrying this everywhere I go since I've gotten my hands on it. With that said, even though this is a sponsored video, I will always give an honest review on anything I have in my hands and do my best to provide information as accurately as I can. So there's two versions of the T-Echo, a standard model that has the recommended SX1262 LoRa radio, Bluetooth, and GPS. And the other model, which is the one I have here, is a version that also includes the Bosch BME280 environmental sensor that provides temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. One of the biggest benefits to the T-Echo is that at the time of this video's creation, it is the only portable Mesh-tastic capable device that's ready to go out of the box, other than flashing the Mesh-tastic firmware to it. Other devices like the T-Beam, T-Deck, WizBlock require a bit of assembly and 3D printed enclosures for them. For those of you out there that just want to get a device that you can hit the ground running with, the T-Echo is the only choice at the moment. The next biggest benefit of the T-Echo is that it uses the NRF52 microcontroller, which has significantly better battery life than the ESP32 microcontroller used by LilyGo's other products like the T-Beam and T-Deck. For comparison, a T-Beam with a 2600 milliamp hour battery will last a little over a day or so, where the T-Echo lasts several days and with a much smaller battery at 850 milliamp hours. Another battery saver on the T-Echo is the screen, which is an e-ink screen that uses no power to maintain an image on the screen. The only time screens like e-ink screens need power is when changing what's displayed on the screen. One of the downsides to e-ink screens, however, is the slow refreshing. But that hasn't been a big drawback for me as Meshtastic is mostly used from the cell phone app. Now I'm not sure these types of devices have any sort of warranty, but if you're like me, the first thing you do with the device is void the warranty anyways. And for those of you like that, there have been others that have squeezed in a bigger battery into the T-Echo, and I'll likely do the same at some point. But I feel the stock battery lasting several days should be fine for most people though. And as you can see inside the device here, there's some extra room for those of you that do want increased battery capacity. There's even a 3D print available for a bigger battery cover to increase the capacity even more. Now let's have a look at the antenna. If you've seen my previous video on antennas for the Getting Started with Mesh-tastic series, you'll know that the antennas that come with other LilyGo products like the T-Beam are not very good at all and I highly recommend that you upgrade from the stock antenna on those. With that experience with the T-Beams, I was eager to see if the T-Echo would be an improvement. With the 915 MHz T-Beam, the antenna seemed to be tuned closer for the 433 MHz range. So it seemed like they may have been using a single antenna for all of their devices. On the T-Echo's antenna, it does have 915 MHz printed on it, so that is promising. But let's throw it on the Nano VNA and see what we get out of it. So as we can see here, it's hovering around an SWR of 6. And while this is way better than the T-Beam, which was off the charts for the 915 MHz range, it's still above the recommended SWR of 2 or less. I'm a big fan of these antennas from CDE Byte that have a good SWR when both straight and folded that I showed in a previous video. But due to their size and them not being flexible, they're better suited for fixed applications instead of a highly portable device like the T-Echo. So as an upgrade on the included antenna, I've been using this flexible antenna from Gizont, which has been a community favorite. I ordered the 20 centimeter version, but it seems like the 17 centimeter version is better on 915 megahertz, I've learned. 
So I've placed an order for that one and I'll test that out when it arrives. This 20 centimeter version has an SWR of around three. So while that's not the ideal SWR, it's less than the stock antenna. So I'll be using that one until the 17 centimeter antenna arrives. Moving on to the device itself, you'll see that there's two buttons on the side here and a touch sensitive button on top. This touch sensitive button seems to just refresh the screen. The side buttons can be pressed once or twice for different functions. And the side bottom button can also be long pressed to turn off the device. Pressing the bottom side button once is what you use to cycle through the usual different mesh-tastic screens that show the last message received, info on other nodes, GPS and system info, and the environmental sensor information if you have the model with the BME280. Pressing this button twice will turn the backlight on and off. And pressing the top button once will reset the device. Pressing this button twice will put the device in the mode where it shows up as a flash drive on your computer and then where you can drag and drop the firmware to flash mesh tastic onto the device. Now these side buttons bring up a flaw with the t -Echo. The buttons are a bit sensitive and while hiking I found that having my t in my chest pack along with other items in it, the other items would sometimes bump the reset button and reboot the device. Sometimes I even found myself rebooting it by just grabbing it without being mindful of the button. Luckily there's a number of 3D printed solutions to this, like this bracket case that helps prevent unintentional button presses, or these 3D printable low profile buttons by PDX Locks, who's a very active member in the Meshtastic community. In closing, while the LilyGo t -Echo has some easily fixable flaws like the sensitive button issue or the need for an upgraded antenna, I think the device is a great choice overall, especially for new users looking to jump into Meshtastic and hit the ground running, or for users that want a small portable device that's easy to carry around. As mentioned in the intro, this has become my favorite portable device and I'll definitely continue using it. If you'd like one for yourself, there will be an affiliate link in the video description below. That'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. There's more videos coming soon, including the start of the Advanced Mesh Tastic series, and I hope to see you there. Thank you all and have a good one.